In today's short video, we're going to take a look at the cursor functions on the 2400 series of Tektronix scopes. This includes the 2445, 2465, and 2467. Now the three main functions are to measure you know, voltage differences, uh, time differences, as well as frequency differences. And those are the most common things. We'll go over those first. But there's actually three more less often used and less often known about functions of these uh, cursors as well. The ability to measure voltage ratios, we'll talk about how to set that up and why you might use it, as well as duty cycle of things like pulse width modulated signals, as well as measuring phase uh, between two different signals, for example. These are all functions that are part of the cursor system. So let's get started. The main controls for the cursors are located right here, just above the seconds per division knob. We've got a button to turn on the delta V measurements, the delta T measurements, and then the 1 over delta T measurements, and then a knob to control each of the two cursor positions. So let's start with the delta V. So if we push the delta V button, we can see the two cursors appear on the screen, and I get a, a delta V voltage measurement uh, right there on the display. The first knob right here, the reference one, will adjust the dotted line. Uh, and we can move that position up or down. So if we move that down to the trough of this particular waveform, right there. The other knob, obviously, we call it just delta, is measuring uh, above that. And if we bring that right to the top, we can see that this signal is 1 volt peak to peak, which is exactly what I have my signal generator set to. The adjustment I just made to those two positions was done independently. One knob controlling uh, one cursor and one knob controlling the other. However, this button here allows you to switch between independent control and tracking control. You see how the track lights up here now. Under the tracking control, the reference position will move both cursors up or down, leaving the adjustment between them the same. So it allows you to compensate and adjust you know, for, say, an offset in your signal without changing the delta measurement. And then you adjust the other one to adjust just the dashed line, which gives us the delta measurement. So you can you know, adjust that and then adjust both of them together in that tracking mode. And that tracking mode and independent mode also works when we start making time domain measurements. So again, it's very simple uh, but very handy uh, cursor functionality to measure signal amplitudes without having to count divisions and do the math. Now if I add a second channel, you can say, okay, well, what is that delta V now going to measure? The delta V is always going to be relative to the, the lowest number channel that's turned on. So we can see that channel 1 is at 200 millivolts of division, channel 2 is at 500 millivolts of division. These cursors are behaving or measuring at the 200 millivolt division level, even though my channel 2 waveform, as you can see, is a lower amplitude because it's at 500 millivolts of division. If I turn off channel 1, Okay, now you can see the cursors are now measuring a different value because now they're measuring uh, against that 500 millivolt uh, setting. And if I adjust my cursors to measure this particular signal, we'll see that indeed that's also basically a 1 volt peak to peak signal. So that's basically all there is to it in terms of the delta V measurements for the cursors. Let's take a look at the time domain measurements. So if I now hit the delta time button, we can see those cursors now change to some vertical cursors. And again, if I adjust them, I can, I'm measuring the time difference between them. So for example, we can see that I'm running at 200 nanoseconds per division. And if I position these cursors basically one division apart, you can see that's basically my 200 nanosecond measurement right there, measuring between those two cursors. So this is a nice handy way of measuring you know, skew between two signals, for example, or the width of a particular pulse or something like that. Again, just to give you a way of measuring time across the display without, again, having to count divisions and do the math. Now pushing both the delta V and delta T buttons at the same time will convert this from a delta T measurement to a 1 over delta T measurement. There we go. So now it's 1 over delta T. So it's basically taking the, the delta time between those two and inverting it, which is essentially showing me frequency. So for example, if I look, say, at the first zero crossing of this waveform here and bring this to the second zero crossing, I can see that this is reporting a 1.5 megahertz 
frequency of that sine wave, which is exactly what I have my signal generator set to. So the, the delta t and 1 over delta t are basically using the same vertical cursors, but just a different set of math. So now let's take a look at the lesser known cursor functions. And these occur when the vertical settings or the horizontal settings are not in their locked calibrated positions. What I mean by that is these VAR knobs normally will be fully clockwise in their kind of detented position so that we get a, a accurate and calibrated vertical scale or accurate and calibrated horizontal scale. In those cases where you're not locked in that calibrated position, the cursors take on their new functionality. So let's start with the vertical function. So if I go and change my uh, vertical setting to be in the uncalibrated variable mode by rotating this knob counterclockwise, we can see I'm not in a calibrated scale now. And you also notice that the cursors change to a ratio number. Now that 100% value corresponds to the markings on the display that show 0% and 100%. And I've covered those markings in the past in a video where I talked about how to measure rise time. Because essentially you have 0% here, 100% here, and then just above that the next radical is 10% and the one up here is at 90%. So it makes it easy to measure a rise time by adjusting the amplitude of your signal to hit the 100% points and then measuring between the 10 and 90. Now in the case of using this ratio measurement, let's say for example you want to you know, take a look and see where you know, at what frequency does my amplifier output drop by half or drop by 70% or something like that. What you would do is set the frequency, for example, of your signal so that it is in the passband, adjust the output or amplitude of that signal until it adjusts and hits those 100% value points. And then once you have that 100% value point, then go adjust the uh, your circuit. And as the signal drops, let me just drop an amplitude here. Okay, as that signal drops, you can say, okay, at what point did it reach, you know, some smaller percentage that you might be interested in? And uh, you can go set that up, or I can even put the tracking mode on, maybe set that to, say, I want that to be at, uh, you know, 70%. I'll adjust that to 70, and adjust that around, and then I'll play with my circuit, or whatever I'm doing, until I reach that particular value that I'm interested in. So again, really handy to look for percentage changes uh, of your signal. And you'll also notice that it can actually go up above that 100% as well. So those little dashed lines for 0 and 100% can be used at the, at the starting point uh, for setting the reference of your signal and then use those cursors to measure a percentage difference from that nominal 100% value. So next let's take a look at the additional functions for the delta T. So let's turn the delta T on here. And again, uh, by just hitting it once, I'm essentially getting my delta T number and the, actual, the absolute value because I'm in a calibrated horizontal scale. Now similarly, when I take the horizontal out of the calibrated mode by rotating this VAR knob counterclockwise, now we can actually see that I get a ratio number horizontally. And the way this is scaled, 100% is equal to five divisions across the screen. So you'll notice if I, if I adjust these cursors so that I'm covering five divisions, okay, that's basically 100%. Okay, so five divisions is conveniently half of the screen width, right? So if I bring this all the way over to the edge, I can see I'm right at one edge and then right in the middle or something in between. So 100% is equal to five divisions. So, for example, for this particular pulse, for example, I might want to know what the duty cycle is. So the first thing I would do is adjust it so that the period of my signal takes up five divisions. So uh, let me speed this up one more click. And if I rotate this down, I can see, uh, let's go right to about there. In fact, I'm going to move my position ever so slightly. So I can see my rising edge of my signal is right here. And if I adjust my horizontal scale, such that the signal, you know, the next signal crossing for the next cycle is exactly five divisions later. That becomes essentially my 100%. So now I can simply take these two cursors and if I position it around one of those pulses, I can say that that pulse now, that's a 28.5% duty cycle. Uh, so that means that the, the pulse is on for 28.5% of the total cycle. Okay, so let's take a look at the final 
unusual mode is the 1 over delta T. So there's my normal 1 over delta T measurement, again measuring that 1.5 megahertz frequency. Again, if we adjust the uh, time scale so to be variable and not calibrated, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit and then reduce it variable, I can see now that I get a phase measurement. Now the phase measurement is set up so that phase is equal to 360 degrees, or effectively one cycle, when you're at five divisions. So we kind of recognize a theme here. So for example, if I adjust my horizontal scale vernier so that my signal, one cycle, occupies five divisions right there, now I can actually see I'm measuring 360 degrees you know, for the entire cycle. Now where this becomes handy, let's add a second signal here that actually has a phase shift on it. I'll, I'll move this up or down so you can kind of see that's my second signal sitting here. So we'll kind of line those up to make it easy to look at that same uh, center. And say, how much of a phase difference do I have between these two signals? So I can adjust uh, my cursors, for example. And let's put one at the zero crossing of one waveform and one at the zero crossing of the other waveform. And I can see that I've got 53 degrees of phase difference between these two sine waves. So the only thing to really to remember is when you're using the variable functions of the markers that for the vertical, the 100% values are the 0 and 100% uh, indicators on the display. And for the horizontal, the 100% ratio, 100% duty cycle, or 360 degrees is five divisions. So you're going to play with the D10 controls and the variable so that essentially one cycle of your waveform occupies f uh, five divisions. And then you can accurately measure things like duty cycle, phase shift, and things like that. So if you have a 2400 series scope and maybe even some of the other series of Tektronics analog scopes that have these cursor functions, now you know how to use the vertical uh, delta T, 1 over delta T, as well as the more non-standard vertical ratio, duty cycle, and phase measurements that are also available through those cursors. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And thanks again as always for watching.